it's like the young the people that are younger coming up right now. It's like they don't realize how small the world really is. Exactly. And how you can eighty six yourself from a oh, from an industry from that's tight forty years but, from something forty years from now. It's yeah, crazy. exactly. It's crazy, and I think everybody watching this, like, if there's one thing you take from this, <laughs> yeah, understand that what goes around comes around, and the world is very small. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. Today, we've got Jason Ciano, and we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. All right. This is episode. <laughs> Love that. Love this is, that. This is episode seventy-nine of the Sales Wolves podcast, and as you guys can see, we have a special guest uh, all the way from. Are you in New Jersey right now? I'm in New York. You're in New York right now. So New York, New Jersey, back and forth. Uh, But we got Jason Ciano on here. And uh, man, this has been a long time um, coming to have you on both of my podcasts, especially my other one. I was like, how is it possible that he hasn't been on yet? It's it's ridiculous. But uh, we've become very good friends. We met um, on Instagram. It was just, you know, a tale as old as time. And uh, met on Instagram and then met in person for the first time down in Miami for Agent 2021, Vayner Experience's first uh, event that they put on, uh, but have just built a relationship over time since then, hung out in New York a couple of times. And uh, just, I have a massive amount of respect for what he's doing, not just in his bread and butter, which you'll hear more about in real estate in a specific niche there, uh, but also what he's doing on the social media side and as a media company and has really taken what he was doing and what he was doing for his company and seen a need out there, a gap in the market, and just decided I'm just gonna fill it myself. And now I'm gonna be able to provide this service that we're doing for us, my company, provide that for other people, uh, which is really a blueprint of what we're trying to do here as well. And so there's a lot of congruency there, uh, but man, I have utmost respect, appreciation for you as a friend and as a business person. Um, So man, jump on. Let everybody know. I'm pretty sure I haven't even said your name yet, but maybe I have. But Jason Ciano, uh, come on and just tell everybody a little bit about who you are, where you're from, sure. and kind of what your main focus is right now uh, in business. Absolutely. So first, thank you for the kind words. The feelings mutual, as you know. Uh, so yeah, so I am in commercial real estate. Um, kind of dumb that down a little bit. Tell tell a little bit of my history, my story. Uh, my company that is called Saber Real Estate, what we do when I started it, uh, the inspiration for starting this this business. Uh, so basically, I started in commercial real estate back in 2001, um, shortly after graduating college and, and a brief stint in inter- internet uh, advertising before commercial real estate. Hmm. Um, that was also right around the time that 9-11 occurred and I was in New York City on the 32nd floor at 32nd and Broadway actually and I saw the second plane fly into the uh, into the tower. Wow. Um, so that that was a, a crazy time to be in New York City. How many how many miles are we talking there distance wise from from uh, the Twin Towers? Oh, uh, you know, Mileage wise, great question. But if you think about it, you know, I'm, I'm in Midtown right by Penn Station. OK. Watching the Twin Towers, which are, you know, the financial district. Yep. So bird's eye view um, of, the, of, you know, downtown uh, Manhattan. So, yeah, it was insane. That's a story for another time. But, yeah. you know, at that point in my life, uh, you know, Internet advertising was very interesting to me, but it was also just kind of a, a job. Um, and at the around the same time, the internet bubble burst, and a lot of a lot of companies were downsizing. And I was actually, as the rounds of layoffs were occurring, I was hoping that I would be part of those layoffs and collect some sort of severance package and <laughs> decide what I wanted to do when I grow up, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, I should mention that at the same time, I was uh, DJing in nightclubs throughout New York City. Um, was very heavily involved in the restaurant nightclub scene in, in New York, primarily uh, Miami as well. The Hamptons, you know, running share houses for 
uh, people that have gone on to basically become the best in nightlife uh, across the country and world. Hmm. Um, so, you know, always had an interest in that side of the business. So when I started to, uh, to I should say that I, I did not get laid off and I ended up having <laughs> to quit. Um, so I didn't get my, uh, my, my you, you compensation. Must have, you must not have tried hard enough. Uh, yeah, apparently. I, I don't know about that, though, because when you're DJing till about two, three in the morning and then you're showing up for work at uh, whatever time I would get in, I think yeah. I was trying pretty hard. That's fun. Um, but yeah, so I, I uh, always had a, an interest in real estate uh, and more specifically kind of the retail side of the business, which is very unique. It's a niche that not many people focus on in the grand scheme of real estate. Um, but you know, it was a way for me to be able to marry my passion for restaurants and, and retail and fashion. You and I both have a, a, a shoe problem, a uh, sneaker issue, if you will. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I've always been really into fashion and, and music and, and all of these types of things. Hey, hey and, Jason, let me stop yeah. you real quick. What was that acronym, uh, that your partner used, uh, when we were together here for, that kind of explains those different sectors. Yeah, so uh, he he was referring to the Halo sector. Got it. Which is health, active, lifestyle, outdoors. Got it. Okay. Um, and that'll fit kind of when I get a little bit further into what we do at Sabre Real Estate, that'll fit into it. Awesome. Um, so I ended up starting at a, a, a smaller boutique firm uh, outside of New York City in Long Island, which is uh, a suburb you know, outside of New York City. Uh, so, uh, the family had pioneered the retail real estate industry and owned and developed about, uh, about 8 million square feet of, uh, shopping centers specifically on Long Island. Uh, so when I went to work for them, that's really how I, uh, cut my teeth, if you will, in the business. But what is, what is retail real estate, right? So it's basically anything that has a storefront, right? And then it, it, it's, it kind of, um, it, 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 there's a lot of different things that it encompasses, but uh, early on in, 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 the, in my, uh, my career, I had the opportunity to pitch Starbucks coffee and uh, I did, and I ended up getting the Starbucks account uh, about probably two years into the business. And, and, you know, a lot of the Starbucks professionals uh, came over from McDonald's and McDonald's kind of wrote the book on, uh, on, you know, restaurant and, mm -hmm. and retail real estate development. Yep. They're more of a real estate company than they are a burger company. If you've yep. read Grinding It Out by Ray Kroc, you probably, or actually more recently, the movie came out. Uh, so a lot more people are familiar with, mm -hmm. with Ray Kroc's story. Uh, but it was very much a real estate play. And uh, what does that mean when I was hired by Starbucks? They were basically my first large corporate client. So I was hired to analyze their existing stores within my marketplace at the time, which was Long Island, which is about 120 miles in length. It's two counties uh, and heavily, heavily populated counties, obviously based on proximity to New York. Yep. Um, there were at the time, uh, you know, a, a couple dozen Starbucks locations in the market. So what I did was uh, analyze the existing locations and basically develop the strategy for the rest of the trade area. Hmm. Today, we have, I want to say, about 100 and, 120 stores in that trade area. So between wow. 2003 and today, uh, I've done over 100 Starbucks transactions specifically. Hmm. And uh, what's nice about that is I, I partner up with my clients and I become an extension of their real estate department. Hmm. Um, I was fortunate enough to actually have that opportunity early on in the business, which as you, as you can imagine, establishes credibility for somebody like myself sure. very quickly. And then pitching other accounts becomes uh, becomes a lot easier when you say that you're Starbucks broker, et cetera. Yep. Uh, I don't want to ramble on, but my next claim to fame from there was, yeah, I went to college in Arizona. I went to the university of Arizona, spent a lot of time on the West coast. Uh, early on in my career, I was going back and forth frequently, at least, uh, at least once a month at a minimum visiting friends in, uh, in, in basically outside of Beverly Hills. And I'm sitting at a, at a FedEx 
Kinkos, I think at the time they were called <laughs> FedEx Kinkos. And I'm looking out of the window because you, you know, clearly we didn't have these things, right? So yeah. I, I needed to actually log on to a computer and uh, get in and, and you know catch up on on everything that uh, I was working on at the at the time. And I'm looking out the window of this uh, this FedEx, and I see what is Chipotle. Um, and this was back in 2004. And I, you know, I see this like amazing facade and like, it's just calling my name. I leave all my crap on the desk <laughs> and walk out and walk across La Cienega Boulevard and walk into Chipotle for the first time. And I'm like enamored at what this concept is. Huh. Fast forward, I end up bringing Chipotle to New York and rolling out their strategy. Wow. Um, so that's kind of, that was the early uh, stages of my career, how I got into the business. What, what does that look like? And, and I appreciate you giving us kind of that, that timeline there. What, what does that look like when you talk about with Starbucks that initially was doing basically market research on their existing locations and then talking about expansion? What does that, that, and then the same thing with Chipotle, but what does that initial phase look like? Is that initial phase just like value add to hopefully get them as a, future client or was that like a contract based, like you were getting paid to do research on those locations? Yeah. So what, what's interesting, it's a great question. And what's very interesting about our business is you don't get paid anything to do anything. Essentially we get compensated once we close deals. Got it. Okay. So there's a lot of lead time. And as a result, it's not for the faint of heart. And it's mm -hmm. very, very difficult to sustain any sort of livelihood while you're waiting for a lease transaction with a Starbucks that typically takes anywhere from a minimum of 12 to 18 months, wow. uh, let's say from start to finish. And a, a, a commercial real estate broker does not get compensated a dime for the work that's done until the tenant is open for business and paying rent. Uh, so you can understand that yeah. it's a very difficult industry to kind of get into and, and you have to have some sort of side income, uh, a side hustle. You know, yeah. a lot of people that I hire today uh, are waiters, waitresses, mm -hmm. you know, working other jobs, bartenders, things of that nature, where they can learn the business and spend at least, you know, 24 months basically understanding how the business operates, terminology, things of that nature, and then, you know, ultimately making, making uh, deals and, and earning commissions. Uh, so at that time, the early stages of, of Starbucks, um, you're, you're so proud to be engaged by them that mm -hmm. you're, you know, I would literally work till 1am, you know, grind it out every day and just literally make it my entire life to analyze their existing stores and, uh, and basically, you know, the, the white space that we could develop. Um, but that strategy is, uh, you're expected to do that strategy, um, at no cost to them. So let's unwrap that briefly here, because I think for those watching this podcast, listening to this podcast, the Sales Wolves podcast, um, a lot of them are in sales. And my experience to a large degree is in shorter sales cycles and very much transactional, high, uh, fast paced uh, environments. And I'm currently in a position now where I'm I'm transitioning into a lot more of my thought processes now long term, um, and it's not a, it's not an easy transition to make. And so, sure. what would what advice would you give, or what were some things that you kind of kept front of mind, and advice that you would give for others to be able to do the same that are in a sales cycle that is a longer? I mean, twelve to eighteen months is about as long as it gets. Um, but those that are in I, a, I, I just opened a, uh, I just opened a Starbucks that I started 12 years ago. So, uh, so yeah, in, in our business, 12 to 18 months, you know, in your business, 12 to 18 yeah. months seems as long as it gets. Sure. But I'm closing deals all the time that I started over a decade ago. That's unbelievable. But yeah. but somebody that's that's just starting in a, sure. in a career that, that has a longer sales cycle, um, what are some of those things that, that you put in place, those structures that you put in place to make sure that daily, you're doing the right activities that you know will lead to those long-term wins, 
But sure. in the short term, seem like, man, I just feel like I'm you know, running on a treadmill and not getting anywhere. Um, what, what were some of those things that helped when you got started in that, in that space? Yeah. So, you know, fortunately I've created an atmosphere at Sabre where younger inexperienced people are lined up with more senior level people okay. and working on business out of the gate, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, unlike myself at the time when I was working for a smaller boutique office, I was literally given a computer, a phone at, at the time, you know, Hagstrom maps, which, you know, hard maps and a phone book, literally I'm dating myself now, but <laughs> you know, all of these things that have evolved into, you know, the internet, you can get any information that you want mm-hmm. and makes everything at, it, it puts everything at your fingertips and allows you to get that information so much quicker and easier. Yep. Um, so, you know, I think it's the first thing that I would suggest to people is that they line themselves up with the right company that can help train them and ensure their success in a short period of time. Okay. Mm. So that's how I think we differentiate ourselves a lot in the marketplace. Uh, a lot of other larger companies and I've worked, you know, when I left uh, the boutique firm that I'm referencing, I went to in 2007, uh, I took a, a check to go to CB Richard Ellis to spearhead uh, my territory, essentially their retail services group. And, um, you know, so I have that experience in that larger corporate environment as well as the small boutique firm. And that's ultimately what created the inspiration behind Sabre, which is marrying the best principles and best practices from both a boutique firm that's quick and nimble and, uh, and strategic and, and specializes. Mm. And then, you know, obviously the, the best traits from a large global powerhouse like CB Richard Ellis. And, uh, you know, I think it's very important to understand what excites you. Okay. What, what are you most interested in and then meet as many different companies as possible and more or less interview them to make sure that it's the right fit for you out of the gate because somebody who's ends up at the wrong company or is promised things that are not followed through on, um, you know, we'll, we'll fail, unfortunately. And, and, you know, I'd rather, I, I always say I'd rather fail quickly than, mm-hmm. you know, than just prolong something, yeah. uh, being in the wrong situation. But first and foremost, it's that second, you have to be self-motivated. Yep. Um, so, you know, I, I had a sales meeting earlier where I was addressing many of my brokers and just talking about how, you know, we can expect certain things of everybody, but if you don't have the drive, the fire and the passion to actually go out and, and, you know, go the extra mile and not focus so much on the dollar amounts and just really enjoy helping your clients. And what's nice is you get to see the, the, uh, the help that you're giving them in our side of the business, right? Mm-hmm. Because once we open something, we can, we drive past it. We go in, we touch it, we feel it. Yeah. We become, uh, very entrenched in their businesses and become advisors for them beyond just the real estate process. Yep. Um, so that's always exciting too. So, you know, it's a very relationship driven business. So you need to do the right thing. Um, at all times, doing the right thing is always the right thing. So I think an interesting place that we could take this conversation in relation to what you just said, since you and I are both are, are heavily involved in social media, for that person that may be just now getting into it, but really for that person that, look, with all like the way the world works these days, but people don't stay in careers forever. Like people have multiple, multiple careers, different industries, different companies. Sometimes it's complete opposite of what you're doing 10 years from now than what you're doing right now. But it seems to me that that's one of the key pillars of the importance of building a brand on social media is that if all of a sudden I went from being in the insurance industry to going into your space, that I could condense some of those timelines to where, especially if I build my brand that's not so industry and even beyond industry, company specific, job specific, where I've just built a brand on hard work ethic and integrity and all of these these things that when you go into a new industry that you come and you still have some stature, you still have some presence there 
where when you're meeting people and, and the people that already know you, your, your network, that they don't see you as, I remember when I started as a financial advisor and they're like, hey, reach out to your friends and family. I'm like, those are the last people I'm gonna reach out to because they're the ones that know I just started as a financial advisor. Like they're the ones that know I don't have any experience. Like those are the last people I'm gonna call. Like I need to get a few years under my belt before I'm gonna be comfortable asking, you know, to manage my dad's portfolio. Like he knows I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you're not but, pulling the wool over his eyes. Yeah. So but with building a personal brand on social media, it gives you the ability to go into those situations. And regardless of if your past history was in a completely different industry, the fact that someone has been able to watch you and see that you are someone that works hard, that you are someone that does the right thing for the customer, even though that's now a completely different client or customer. Um, what are some thoughts on, on that as kind of one of the prerequisites to why I would even start building a brand to begin with? Yeah, so you know, a, a personal brand, everybody needs to develop their personal brand, right? And I tell my, my agents that it's in their best interest, not necessarily in Sabre's best interest always, because to your sure, point earlier, absolutely. it's about you know, them as human beings, yep. uh, just telling that story to the world, which is also, if they do a good job, it's gonna obviously, it's gonna draw attention to it and sure. other companies that are in competition with myself are gonna notice yep. and they're gonna approach them and try to bring them over to their company for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But I'm in favor of, of helping humans, yeah. right? Yeah. So I can't help myself. I mean, that's just the reality. If somebody walked into my office right now and said, hey, listen, I have a better opportunity elsewhere I'm looking to go, I will help them you know, yeah. get the best out of that opportunity yep. every time. Yep. Um, but to, to dive in a little bit more about, about developing a brand, you know, I think that it's funny because my industry is very traditional in nature. Mm -hmm. um, there, it, it, there's very little innovation. Uh, there's also very, very few people that would sit, you know, behind their desk in a V-neck like myself with tattoos <laughs> going on my arms <laughs> Um, and it's finally okay, even though I'm running around with the Kardashians finding them boutiques space in the Hamptons, you yeah. know, I'm not running around with Geico finding them office space where I would probably you know, need to pull that tie sure. up and be very buttoned up. Um, it's, it, you can finally, there's a human el element to anything in business today, right? Yeah. So I look at a personal brand and what we do with social media as kind of building a laser, if you will. So you can kind of point that laser wherever the heck you want to point it down the road. Um, and it's so much bigger than your, let's call it day job, right? Yeah. Uh, even myself as the you know managing principal and CEO of Sabre Real Estate, to your point earlier, I've created and developed a digital media consulting business yeah. uh, called Be Creative, which you know we help other companies do what we're doing at Sabre and, and, you know, obviously that, that goes beyond just the typical Instagram stuff. We develop websites, uh, we, we brand companies and, and, and rebrand, you know, tired companies. Uh, and then beyond that, we do, we do, uh, vlogs for, for businesses, um, which is interesting because we're just taking what we learned ourselves mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, and, helping others that understand the value of brand awareness through this thing, right? Because yeah. who the hell is watching commercials today? And most people that are watching a show on television are sitting on their phone looking at Instagram or Facebook. And if the, if your face pops up, Tyler, right? People yeah. want to learn more about you and you have a few seconds to capture their attention. Sure. And regardless of what you're doing, I, to be honest with you, I know what you do but I'm so much more interested in Tyler, the human and yeah. everything that you do beyond the insurance business. Yep. Um, and, and it all kind of come ties together. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that are successful in business do not even understand the value of social media. I, I agree 100%. It's almost like the, it's almost like the, the real life version of, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? Like you see me in the way I am at the gym, so you know and you understand that that's gonna be the what I bring to the boardroom if we were sitting down with a potential client that you, you and I sure. both were trying to, to pitch. Um, it's interesting, I love the fact that 
with your media consulting company that I'm assuming, and I'm pretty sure I'm right, that it was an organic move based off of people reaching out to you because of what you were doing and then what you were doing for your company. Hey man, like how are you guys doing that? Like, hey man, that we would love to to be able to do something like that, man. That's awesome. Like, man, the vlog that you guys did last week, man, if we had something like that, then it just kind of created out of necessity or out of a need that you saw to say, Completely. well, we can do that for you. Let's put the let's put some some people in place so that we can create uh, create a solution to that to that need. That's exactly what happened. You know, we we would constantly have people, creatives coming into our office, helping us develop our brand, develop our website. Um, you know, the the early vlog episodes were just horrendous. <laughs> um, you know, but I, I I agree with Gary Vaynerchuk about yeah. you know just just getting just doing it right. Don't yep. try to yep. get things perfect and and hold yourself back from actually doing it. Just do it and mm -hmm. figure it out as you go. It'll get better. And it did. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is in that, in the, the digital space, what I found was you have a lot of people that are also not very business savvy. They're creative, but they're not necessarily good at project management or meeting timelines, yep. which in the, in the real estate business, it's everything, right? Yep. We under promise and over, over deliver. The majority of the people that we were working with were over promising and under delivering. And I think it goes hand in hand because everybody thinks they they could be a digital marketing, you know, yep. company or, or whatnot. And, you know, for us, it was really the professionalism, the creativity, and the project management that we're bringing to the table as consultants. So what we did was we developed the people that we were working with and built a team that can basically come together as a customized solution for anybody's needs essentially, right? So, uh, so we're, we're, we're really excited about how it started and you're absolutely right. The inspiration was that we knew we could do it better with the right people around us and, uh, you know, people were just constantly asking, you know, who does this for you? Who built your website? Who does this? Who does? And the answer was, was us. Do what, um, what you're, what you're doing. It's so important because if you think about it, if you take a, a, a more global view of like what you're actually doing, what you're actually doing is, is you as a person that said, I see the value in this personal brand. I see the value in creating a social media and online presence for my business and then being able to then master that process yourself enough to then go share it with other people and to be able to provide that service for other people. What you're doing is it's almost like you're legitimizing an industry that just like you said, it's such a, like a foreign language to most people that are in business. Um, I think that's a generational, that's just an age and what, people that are now in the positions that they are in the company, the typical age range and based on their experience. And it, it just is what it is. The companies that are out there doing this at a, at a larger scale right now, they have the ability to overpromise and under deliver. They have the ability to be terrible at the actual business side of running their business because there's nowhere else to go. Like, right. I, like there was like a three month period where I was getting so frustrated uh, this was about a year ago because I was trying to find a social, a freaking social media company in the Greenville, Atlanta, or Charlotte area that actually had like over 2,000 followers on Instagram. And it was like, it got to the point where it was like a joke. Like I'm literally <laughs> like, I'm Googling like social media agency, social media marketing, digital marketing agency. I'm like Googling all these things, comma, Atlanta, Georgia. A bunch of places pop up. I'm like, what's this one? It's the Soundflower digital agency. Awesome. Instagram, 800 followers. I'm like, what? Like, th how is this possible? Like, you can at least fake yeah. it. Like, at least try to fake it. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, exactly. And, and so what you're doing is you're, you're by organically having that just be the natural progression is basically, f it's going to force these companies to actually start practicing what they preach. Like how many DMs have you gotten from someone that says like, Hey, I'd really love to help you grow your engagement on, on Instagram. I saw it's weak. And you look at their page and they have zero engagement. 
Yeah. Like, the other day I, I responded to one of these guys. I, I hate, I now like used to get so angry with myself because it'd be like, check out my profile. I think I can help you with this. And I would get angry with myself for checking out their profile. I'm like, dang, dang it. I'm like, it worked, <laughs> but I still hate it. And, but it would just make me so angry that it wasted like 10 seconds. But the other day I, I did that and I saw the guy he had like 900 followers and he was saying that he could help me grow my followers quicker. And I'm like, I was just like in one of those moods where I was just like, had had it. And I'm just like, I'm like, bro, how can you tell me that you're going to grow my Instagram followers faster when I'm growing at this rate a week, I'm at this and you're at, you have 900 followers. I was like, it's, is this not the, the overweight, like obese personal trainer? Like yeah, asking, exactly. asking me if I want to come in for a consultation and session like this. It doesn't like, like help me understand. And, right. uh, and the guy actually responded, which I respect. He responded. He's like, man, he's like, I'm eating my own dog food right now. He's like, I'm just getting started in this. You know, my page had 300 followers last month. And so I'm actually growing it pretty well. And I was like, oh, you know, I, respe I respect that. I'm still not going to do anything sure. with you. <laughs> but I'm still not impressed, but I, I appreciate respect. you just not being completely ridiculously um, just a scam. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I love the fact that what you're doing is going to ultimately make those agencies that have been there level up to where they're actually providing value based on what they're actually doing, not just on these basic principles that they know they can charge a lot of money to companies that have a lot of money. Like that's- Yeah, that's we, we've that. seen it already. I mean, with, we're working with very talented, hardworking people yeah. that have companies that as a result of us working together and then really seeing how we do it at Sabre, they've leveled up their own brands. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's a lot of, it's the, it's the shoe salesman, right? It's yeah. like the, or the, um, the, it's the people that if you are so entrenched in something, yeah. you may not spend the same amount of time and energy actually getting all of your, you know, your website, you yeah. know, as good as it could possibly be. Yeah. Um, so I get that too, but I think, I think that's there's always, also, that's always the response. Like, I know, and I, I know, get, but it, and it's but like, and I, like, you, like, I get it. And, and they're like, well, we're, we're focused on working with our top, you know, our fortune 500 clients and this and that. I'm like, yeah, like I get right, but it. Perception's get reality, it. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Perception's reality. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's your core business and you're spending your entire life in that space yeah. and you don't have the best website possible, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, come on, that's the only way that people are judging you. Yeah. The first moment that you get one, one bite at the apple, right? People yeah. are going to judge you based on what they see. And, and, and ultimately that's your website. And then to your point, it goes right to your Instagram, right yeah, from there and then exactly. Facebook, et cetera. So, so tell you know, me you so, be, at a minimum, you have to practice what you preach. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what I love about what you're doing, man. And so tell me a little bit how, um, if it was a little bit of a, a curve in the road, at what point did you start, start having a big focus on the boutique gym concepts or just the, the health sure. and fitness world? Yeah. So, you know, so at Sabre, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on what we do. So we are New, New York Metro based. Uh, we have three offices, uh, one in Long Island, which is kind of the backyard where everything grew out of. Uh, we have an office in Manhattan and an office in New Jersey. Um, so we're about uh, about 50 people in total um, between those three offices. And there's several different sides of what we do. Uh, so some of us work on the development side or on the landlord represent representation uh, side of the business. So we're basically helping developers develop projects that are merchandised with, uh, you know, live, work, play development type projects with um, with and, and planning the retail components of those. Hmm. Uh, and then we have obviously the tenant representation side, which I mentioned uh, and again, the bulk of, of both of those sides of the business are really New York Metro based. And then we have a consulting uh, national accounts business where I spend most of my time, uh, which is basically traveling, looking for new concepts, kind of the same way that I found Chipotle many years ago mm -hmm. uh, and helping them scale and roll out nationally. Uh, those can either be corporate clients, they could be franchised clients. Uh, so I'll tell you kind of how I got into what you're describing. And back when I went to CB Richard Ellis in 2007, 
I ended up leaving my accounts at my previous company because I do everything on the up and up and I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to uh, ruin my relationship with my, with my boss and mentor at the time, who, by the way, is now my business partner. So it was a good decision. <laughs> um, so that's a, good, I, that's, I, a good, that's a solid lesson right there. It's a great lesson because most people, and it's crazy because as time goes on, younger people burn so many bridges. Oh, yeah. I mean, people that I've helped not only professionally, but personally, and by the way, I'm not looking for anything re in return, but it, it's amazing to me how people will, uh, will leave in, in, you know, in, in the worst possible way so it's like the, and it's, take business that I gave to them basically to work on. And it is what it is, but it's like, they it's don't, just, it's like, it's like the young the people that are younger coming up right now. It's like, they don't realize how small the world really is. Exactly. And how you can 86 yourself from a, oh, from an industry from that's something 40 years from something 40 years from now. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. And I think everybody watching this, like if there's one thing you take from this, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. understand that what goes around comes around and the world is very small. So yep. you should always do the right thing. Um, so I ended up having no accounts and had to start from scratch again. And, and I stumbled upon a concept called Massage Envy. Uh, I ended up uh, touring with them, established a great relationships with the area developers that were uh, focused on uh, several states. And uh, as it turns out, they uh, along, along the way, they discovered a concept called European Wax Center in South Florida. I flew in to look at the concept with them. There were two studios at the time. They partnered with the founders of uh, European Wax Center and rolled out 500 units inside of a few years. Wow. And uh, from there, they decided they wanted to start their own concept from scratch. That concept is called Orange Theory Fitness. So my longtime clients that were <laughs> one day just massage envy franchisees now started and own the most successful successful fitness franchise uh, in the world. Wow. And uh, they opened their 1,000th location a few weeks ago. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, as, as the retail uh, shift changes and as Amazon eats people's lunch, so to speak, yep. and, uh, you know, all of that trickles down to the downtowns and the shopping centers and retailers are – you know, forced to evolve and have an online presence, an omni-channel presence. Uh, it's changing the landscape of what, you know, shopping centers look like. So um, my myself and my company have been forced to kind of evolve and focus more on service-oriented businesses that are less impacted by the internet. Um, and that's always been kind of our niche. So the market's more or less coming to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, my wheelhouse is really restaurants, fitness. Um, we do a lot of medical, uh, real estate with urgent cares yeah. and believe it or not, we're now doing a lot of, uh, medical marijuana uh, yeah. concepts I because bet. that kind of falls into the same category. Yep. And, um, yeah, it's just really interesting how everything's evolving until, until Bezos decides to, to get in, to get involved in that. And then it's, it's going to be the game scary. over. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. So it's interesting. You said that those, that those businesses not having as big of an impact, uh, the internet not having as big an impact. But the interesting thing is, it's like the, those that you're speaking of, that the internet doesn't have as big of an impact as far as um, different like globalization and different like big conglomerate, like uh, an Amazon being able to take over and do the exact same thing, but get it to you in 38 seconds. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think that there's, you know, listen, w w speaking about fitness specifically, yeah, and you know, I had a, I had a chance to visit you and, and go to your gym, and and clearly you can't work out like that on yeah. the internet, right? But yeah. Peloton is actually, you know, trying mm. really hard yeah. to get you to stay at home and buy yeah. their treadmill and basically do an Orange Theory class That's true. in your home. Huh. Um, so you know, it it is evolving, and and you know, clearly the. Uh, the, those types of companies are, are changing the way that everybody does things. And there's probably, I mean, there's a million different examples, but it's it's got to be up there on the list of industries that the, the branding side, the social media side has never been more important, especially as you know, there's a new boutique concept coming out every single day um, yeah. that's maybe a little different 
than the next, but being able to, but you can have one that pops on the scene tomorrow that because of their incredible social media prowess can completely take over just because of the, again, perceived value or the perception of how big they really are when they may be brand new. I mean, there's some of these like- The best example of that, and I'm curious to to know if you've seen them, is Rumble. Are you familiar with Rumble boxing? The, the only reason I'm familiar of it is is I had heard heard about it from you, so I've been following yeah. them on on Instagram. That and I've been following yeah. Tone House, which is scaring me immensely. Yeah. Those those workouts are like um, Navy Seal, <laughs> like boot camp no, listen, training. I, I did that workout <laughs> with with Brian Mazza yeah. and. Ann Mellum, who's my client and close friend, who's the founder of Solid Core. Yeah. So two like <laughs> athletes that are like in the best possible physical shape you can be in. And uh, I, I actually thought I was gonna die for at least 20 hours. <laughs> I think I saw a video class. of that. Thanks. Yeah, so so but we're actually working now with a concept called Switch Playground, which is also, you know, uh, hit heavy rotation, you know, yeah. short spurts. Uh, for an hour and, and uh, you know, all different types of concepts. There's concepts that uh, one called burn, B-R-R-R-R-R, like burr, <laughs> like cold. So you're working out in a frozen room. There's, wow. there's a new concept called shock therapy or shock treatment where I think you're wearing a vest and you get like shocked or stimmed <laughs> or who knows. But yeah, it, it's, wow. it's insane. But um, to your point, you know, influencer marketing yeah, is yeah, huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, sure. I mean, these, these social media, uh, influencers and fitness, uh, fitness models, and, yeah. you know, they're, they're bringing a lot of credibility and attention to, to boutique fitness concepts, uh, that are all yeah. starting. So, so last question I have for you, and it will kind of allow things to come full circle, but I think it'll give people some practical, um, application here that they can go and actually check out. So we talked about social media, the importance of building a personal brand. We talked about the importance of businesses like these gyms and really anyone, um, any business of having that social media presence. What are some just off the top of your head? And I know when you get asked these questions, you're like, who am I about to offend for leaving out? But it's not like that. But just a couple of examples of some people that are crushing it right now on social, whether that be individuals or maybe a couple gym concepts or just a couple of businesses that people can go check out as, in your mind, an example of someone who's doing it well right now. Yeah. Um, Besides so, us, of uh, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, you, you way better than me, by the way. Um, but but I would say, you know, since it's somebody that we both know, yeah. uh, I think Brian Mazza yeah. is doing a, an amazing job. Absolutely. Uh, you know, developing his personal brand. Yep. And why you and I have both watched that evolve, mm-hmm. uh, you know, pretty, pretty tremendously. And the reason that I say that is because you know, I'll just be on a site tour with a, a client and they'll out of nowhere, just bring his name up hmm. and, you know, Oh, I see that you happen to know Brian and, yeah. you know, da, 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 da. and so if somebody, you know, is just taking notice of, of what an individual is doing yep. beyond, you know, what company he owns or works for, you know, just that person on a personal level yep. uh, and feels like I call it the Kardashian effect because yeah. I went to college with Courtney and, you know, the fact of the matter is everybody thinks that they know them personally, yep. right? Because they're watching them on TV and their mm-hmm. lives are playing out on TV And I've personally been able to use my vlog to, it's amazing. I walk into into a room right now for a meeting for the first time, and I guarantee it's going to happen to me in my next meeting, which is with a a guy who created a piece of uh, of fitness equipment and Mm -hmm. wants to figure out exactly what to do with it. But I guarantee that when he either Googled me or went to my website, he stumbled down the rabbit hole of Real Saber, and now as a result of seeing me on video, feels like he knows me. So it's funny, you shake somebody's hand that you never met and they feel like they're shaking somebody's hand that they've already met. Absolutely. So, I mean, that right there, the power of that is insane. Yep. And, uh, you know, lastly, I'll just say rumble boxing. Okay. Eugene, Eugene Rem, yeah. uh, who's a nightlife impresario, Noah Nyman, Andy Stensler, who's a serial entrepreneur. These guys, you know, they, they created, this is all fabricated, man. Like yeah. they just created a concept that they knew 
based on their network, they can get the right cool people <laughs> that are trend setting mm-hmm. and influencers to wear Rumble shirts and get Justin Bieber and Scooter Braun to invest and yep. Sly Stallone. It's a boxing concept. Let's get Sly Stallone. Yep. They probably put in $1, but they can call them partners and investors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, be again, perceptions, reality at the end of the day, they're building an amazing presence, an amazing brand, and everybody can learn from what they're doing. Yep. Because I'll tell you what, and not, no offense to you guys at Rumble, but you're definitely not the toughest workout. Sure. You're not the best workout. And it doesn't matter yeah. because your marketing and branding is so on point that you're going to take over the world. Yep. And you don't need to be the best. Yeah. You know, that's the reality. And that's what separates a lot of companies that are really good at things, but don't understand how to deliver that message or communicate Mm -hmm. that they're, they're invisible. Yeah. Like the workout is, is just an afterthought. (laughs) I mean, really like, I mean, I was driving in Buckhead like last year and I drove by one of the, uh, what is it? Harry's boot camp. Barry's Barry's. Barry's. Harry's. Yeah. That shows you what I know. Um, so Barry's boot camp. I drove by one the other day and I I like, I I like, Turn around, I'm like, man, I was like, was that a men's clothing store? I've never seen that before. And I was like, they look like they got some cool gear just because the branding on the front, like I literally was like about to turn around just to see if it was a like an apparel shop. Um, yep. and and then found out about what it actually is. So like, I mean, if you're if you're at the level of branding and with your influencer marketing to where someone's willing to wear a shirt that's never even done a workout, <laughs> I mean that's Listen, Soul Cycle. Soul Cycle is the absolute best at that. Yeah. And the fact that I can I will watch people go in and just buy their merchandise <laughs> and not even that. like take a spin class. <laughs> it's amazing to me. And really kudos is. to them because Absolutely. they wrote the book. And Barry's also, they've done a great job. They've been around a long time. Uh, you know, Orange Theory was inspired by the Barry's workout. And, you know, that's another lesson for everybody, right? Yeah. The, Orange, the guys from Orange Theory were so good that they took something that existed, <laughs> pra- packaged it better, and put a different model behind it. And they yeah. have a thousand units today. Barry's is open since like 1992 and has 50. Wow. Jeez. So anyway, but they have nicer merchandise. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So (laughs) let everybody know uh, where they can find you. And I want everybody to know before you do that, that um, I'm actually going to be doing another episode, the next episode of the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm going to be doing it on people that I follow um, and like the value, like what I follow them for. Like, like, yeah, I follow Gary, but like, it's really a couple of little things that I'm looking for when I'm, when I'm engaging with that content and, and different people like that. But one of the people I had on there was you and, and Saber. And one thing I wanted to say was like, the vlog is awesome. The newsletter is really, really good though. Like I get a lot of newsletters like that. Um, the majority of them are like automatic delete, 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 delete. I'm just like too lazy to unsubscribe, but I should have unsubscribed, you know, eight months oh. ago. I actually purged a couple of those yesterday. It was the most liberating feeling of my life. Um, I love that. Yeah. I get three freaking emails every time Andy Frisella sends one out. I don't know how. Um, anyways, <laughs> so, but your newsletter, especially if you're in your industry, but, but myself, like I get a lot out of it. It's, 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 um, it's a really awesome format. Like it's very easy to consume just from a random person that's getting it on a Friday afternoon. You know what I mean? So yeah. I wanted to give you props to that, but tell everybody I where they can that. find you and where they can possibly opt in to get some of those newsletters so that they can make sure that they do check out your vlog. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. So uh, obviously on Instagram, you can find me. It's my full name, Jason with a Y, J-A-Y-S-O-N-C-A-N-O, S-I-A-N-O. Facebook is the same. Uh, my company website is Saber, S-A-B-R-E dot life. And uh, my email is my last name, Ciano, S-I-A-N-O at Saber dot life. Uh, for the newsletter, email me. We'll put you on there. And I appreciate the kind words about the newsletter. Uh, I started a newsletter long before I started the vlog. Hmm. And uh, it actually, it, it it enabled me to become a thought leader within my industry. I bet. Uh, and I highly recommend it for people. Yeah. So anytime that I'm at an industry event, the first thing that happened before I started the vlog was love your newsletter, print it out on Friday, take it home with me over the weekend, read it. Yeah. It's, it's great. And since then, it's become, you know, love the vlog, 
following along with you, so on and so forth. And I have to say, you know, I got a lot of grief for starting a vlog. In, in <laughs> Tell me about and, it. <laughs> and here's the thing, man. You know, here's the reality is that I like doing things when they're uncomfortable. When they mm -hmm. start to become accepted and normal, I get really bored. Yeah. So, you know, I'm kind of at that now that people aren't hating as much on the <laughs> fact that I have somebody following me around with a camera. Yeah. It's so much less exciting, man. I got to be honest. We got to we got to figure level up to the next level. We got to figure out something else. You need like a um, just something to add to the mix. Like you need like a, uh, a Fonsworth Bentley holding a uh, holding an umbrella for you while you're while gotta you're walking around, happen. too. Got to make that up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Absolutely. Man, I can't think about your company without thinking about that one episode of The Office where they were calling it Sabre, <laughs> where they were calling it Sabre, and they had that song. I love that. Jumped in the cab, he walked for the first time. Look to the right, and you see the electric city sign. This is gonna be a good day. We're done to Mippin and Sabre. 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 Saber. It's like the best clip of all time. It's you know what? We're recording this right now. I'm going to make sure that, <laughs> yes. that, that there's a clip in this week's vlog <laughs> of you, me, and, and uh, the office episode with Sabre. On real Sabre. <laughs> yes, sir. Awesome, yes, man. Sir. Well, guys, I appreciate it so much, man, Jason, for having you on. Um, and we'll definitely do it again on the Breadwinner podcast here very soon. Uh, but guys, with that, this is episode 79 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Got Jason Ciano here. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! <laughs> <laughs>